One more time. Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. As today, we head down to the Druid's Grove proper and see what branching paths await us. This'll probably be another fairly dialogue-heavy episode, but uh, I've got to say, I'm digging it. You know, of all the general issues I have with how Larian handled Baldur's Gate 3, the narrative and the cinematic presentation are not among them. Not yet, anyway. I have started hearing some rumblings about issues with mid and late game content. Hopefully that's stuff that'll get smoothed out by the time we actually get to it. But, you know, we'll let, uh, we'll let future retcon worry about that. Oh, speaking of which, we do need to tread lightly with this part. Oh, um, I... I don't have any money or anything to sell. My p partner does that. Okay. I mean, I didn't ask, but, uh... Then what do you do? What? Um... I'm the guard? So... Don't steal anything! I'm watching you. I mean, to be fair, they are unkillable, so they would make for some pretty OP guards. Whoa! Hey! Can't say I've ever seen someone like you before. Yeah, I get that a lot. Go on. Take this ring. It's lucky. Sure. Thanks, I guess. Call it. Heads or tails? Tails, obviously. Tails it is! See? That's the kind of luck you get from one of my lucky rings. I've got more where that came from. Real cheap, too. Interested? Gotta say, that doesn't really have a ring of truth to it. Sorry, kiddo. I'm not just a lizard. I'm a wizard lizard. So I can tell this ring is fake. These runes are gibberish. Hey, not so loud! You caught me. All right. They're not lucky rings. I'm just... trying to earn money for my family. My father left and my mother... she's so sick. I wish I had better things to sell than trinkets, but it's all I have. That's a very sad story, but strikingly similar to one I recently heard from another tiefling child. He was a thief. I, uh, don't know what you mean. Cards on the table, son. Even I can tell this is a badly run tinker's trash scam. Hey, that hurts. I'm running an honest... Uh, okay, what's a tinker's trash? Glad you asked. It's when a scammer offers a target a lucky object, like this ring. Uh-huh. Then rigs a game to convince them the object actually works. Huh. Interesting. And I promise this isn't a Tinker's Trash Scam. Okay, I'll bite. So what name do you have for it, then? Look, I swear to you. These rings are the real deal. I promise I'm not running a scam. Last chance. You want to look at my stuff or not? Just take your ring back and chalk this one up as a loss, son. Be glad I'm not the vindictive sort. <laughs> no fooling you, is there? All right, get walking. Leave some room for the chumps, huh? Yeah, that's what I thought. And moving on. Please, last room. It is forbidden. Let my daughter go right now! She's a thief, Hellspawn. And you will wait for Korga's judgment. Now get back! Ugh! Let me through, Mragrashem, or I'll rip your damn throat out!
Oof, that's no good. Or a sign of the times. Hey, Kaiser. Do all the damn rituals you want. Damn it. We're not we could have taken those gods. I'd rather you not get eaten by a bear. I could try greasing palms. Ease things over. Something's on my mind. We need to get Arabella out. Now. You heard the guards. They're waiting on Corker to give word. I'd sooner trek through the nine hells than trust that snake. Ugh. You two are very sweaty. I saw what happened. Why have the druids taken your kin? Arabella tried to steal their idol. Druids lost their damn minds about it. They need it for their precious ritual. Oh, it's all my fault. I told her I wished the wretched thing would just disappear, or better yet, explode. Now Arabella's being judged by a bunch of druids who hate us. That's not right. This grove is like a cauldron about to boil over. I say we check in on the child, make sure she comes to no harm. It does seem like the druids might be overreacting a little. I'll talk to them. Thank you. They won't give us the time of day. Hurry! I'm at the end of my tether as is. Can't take this waiting! She must be terrified. How about you guys? you have anything to add? She's giving them hell. She's not our kid for nothing. Keep their confidence Lives are at stake. And the... Cowards only care about their bloody rituals. We could help each other. Fight the goblins together. Instead, these fools are trying to chase us away. Keep this up and you Those dirt kissers would let us die for the sake of their bloody grove. Yeah, that's druids for you. Never really been a fan. But let's get in there. Need to find a way forward. Come, Magrin, give him a chance. You get back. Oh wow, a lot of uh, a lot of really confrontational options here. Not here to cause trouble. I'm just. Here to talk to your leader. No, and you'll find trouble all the same unless you get out of my sight. A moment, Giona. What? Oh, I understand. You. Apparently Korga wants to see you. Go ahead. See, I knew we could be reasonable here. Few outsiders are allowed in here. Be respectful and do not interfere. I interfere Try nothing. Palms. These things over. Outsider. Away. Your welcome can be easily withdrawn, outsider. Respect our grove or face our claws. Friend. These guys seem can nice. Tell me about this place. Mm. Hey, is that. Yes, yes, I see. And oh my goodness, he wasn't there in the early access one. build, was he? No. No, I I would definitely remember meeting him. You there! Hello! The infamous Volo. Hail and well met, my friend. Ah, my good friend. You were at the gates just now, no? When the goblins came? You saw them up close? A few questions, if you please. There's no overstating my interest. Of course, by all means, ask away. I shall provide you with the answers you seek. Glory. Now then, how would you describe that particular batch of goblins? Size, nature, distinguishing qualities. You search your mind, successfully recalling various details of goblin behavior.
Just your garden variety goblins, as I recall. Led by a lasher and flanked by booyogs. My, a scholar after my own heart. Spent much time among goblins. Far more than most, I'd wager. Comes with being an adventurer. Part of the job. Shocking little creatures, aren't they? Still, there's quite a bit more to them than most accounts allow. I myself plan to recall the world's most extensive catalogue of their means and habits. A blue ocean of information, I dare say. Now, I've a few more questions, if you don't mind. And the dragon they had marching in the rear, was it of the brass or silver variety? Well, the dragon in the rear was actually me, and I'm neither, but... I suppose I'm closer to brass than silver? Witness mistook obvious silver dragon for brass. Last question, then you'll be quite free. Did the attackers rally to the Absolute when they fell upon the gates? Yes. Actually, that is surprisingly astute. You are absolutely correct. They did, didn't they? Oh, oh, curious. Oh, curious indeed. I've interrogated one, a captive in this very camp. She reports they've abandoned their god, Maglaviet, in favor of someone called the Absolute. The scandal! I mean, yeah, we heard it straight from Slaza. Man's right. Never you mind. I'm on my way to their camp as we speak. I always knew my studies in Gukliak would come to some use. Gukliak. Wait, uh... About our conversation earlier, why... Why insist on adding the dragon? My friend, every story benefits from a dragon. Until we meet again. And again, man's not wrong. Case in point, we are one. Sort of. Pardon me, I must prepare to travel. Good day, my friend. So you're sure about where you're headed? To the goblins camped nearby, of course. I've been tracing their doings with great care. Whoever this absolute they're worshipping might be, I'll be the first to write about it. Fair enough. Good luck with that. What's your take on this, Bosco? Just a moment. This man is recording my story. I am far from home. As the colorful man starts scribbling, the bear sneaks a quick look at the page. His brow furrows. Incomprehensible squiggles surround a crude sketch. A bear disemboweling a clutch of tieflings. Huh. I smell drama amongst these adventurers. What have you heard? <laughs> Keep their confidence, if you insist. Come on. All the druids can understand me. You can. Why can't the man with the pen? I traveled a long way. The man nods thoughtfully and adds another dismembered limb to his sketch. You know, I kind of did assume he could speak with animals, but it is very much in keeping with Volo's reputation to interview someone he can't understand. Keep away from Tuffet. She's lazy enough as is. Harsh. Also, Free fishing rod. 
Would that we could speak freely, my Ursine friend. Alas, I've never learned to converse with your kind. By Sylvanas, the Tree Father, yes. our turmoil yes. is calmed. I'm quite aware. A primer on magical beasts. Each chapter of this book describes the cultural origins of a different mythological beast. Chapter 5. Miniature Giant Space Hamster. Very little is known about this particular cryptid, though stories say they tend to choose well-muscled human males as their steeds when they deign to visit this plane. According to legends, this creature retains a wellspring of indescribable power known only to itself though it provides its seed with perhaps mystical, perhaps mundane courage. Unsubstantiated rumors claim the creature has a taste for human eyes. Balderdash, there's no such thing as miniature giant space hamsters. Boo! Boo to whoever wrote this absurd book! Yes, yes, I see. And is that her with two eyes or one? Autumn Crocus. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And Autumn Crocus is used for... Potions of Featherfall. Neat. I like that they come with their own basket. We're not going to bother with the rest of the chanters. They're obviously preoccupied. By Sylvanas, the old oak, all death begets life. Sure, sure. Circle of life, pretty basic. Oh, I do wish I could understand you. Free mugwort. Which is used for antidotes. Nice. We've got a door? Yes. But we'll hold off on that until we finish the circle. Dark times and getting darker. Oh, there was a door we walked by back in the hollow, too. We'll hit that when we go back through. Apicusis. Speak. Were you just speaking to that bird? The bird knows. She needs to know. You do not. That is certainly fair, but I've already saved this place once. Clearly I'm not a foe. Oh, I uh, slapped the guidance necklace on Gale. Noise. I... Forgive me. It is not you I fear. It is my brethren. More follow Korga every day. They are afraid, and she offers a simple solution. Eject the refugees, and we will be safe. And I take it you disagree? Perhaps not, but that does not make it right. Only Master Hulsin can stop this. I pray my bird returns with news of him. If not, I fear for my people. I say. You know, they say this ritual will help protect your people from the goblins, and yet I can't help but notice you're not helping with it. I would prefer not to. But if Master Hulsin does not return, Korga will give the order, and my voice will not matter. Right. <sighs> I thought you were Hulsin. The boar prances around, haunches clenching and unclenching impatiently. Where's Hulsin? Promise me a mate! 
Okay, this is awkward. Well, at least the sun is nice. You should try it. Lay down and bask in its warmth. Yeah, that's slightly better. Thanks. Again? Just wanted to see if you had anything else to say, and you do not. So I'll be on my way. Let's carefully read this report. A message scratched in a worried hand. Received message from Hag via Sirith, one of Nettie's birds. We buried Sirith uh, ten day ago. Not sure how Hag found him. Message itself was a threat, but also invitation. She wants to meet. Haven't replied. Buried Sirith again. Beneath a heavier stone. And we've got hags in the mix. All of a sudden, that weird potion vendor makes a lot more sense. Oh, interesting. We can't even read that one. It is forbidden. Extracts. The Rule of Three. A long-winded introduction explains that Haskin Zasilifin's notes, published as is from their work journal, have helped bring alchemy to the masses. It starts with a full story on the Dragonborn, who had been descaled as a teenager, and started their alchemical research in hopes of restoring their hide. As the pages turn, it continues to wax poetic about how Zasilifin put aside their own research to help the common people. Much more interesting, though, are Zasilifin's actual research notes. I have decided. I shall make all my notes, both those written and those still to come, available to those who would wish to study. You, reading this text now, are probably one such person. As enticing as potion making is, we shall first start with the most basic alchemical rule. The Rule of Three. Most ingredients can be found throughout Faerun. However, they need to be refined to be of any use in alchemy. Doing so is simple. Just combine three of the same ingredients, and you will obtain an extract, which can be used to brew potions, poisons, oils, and elixirs. So remember, three of the same ingredient make an extract. Or in rhyme form, if you like. When in doubt with alchemy, just recall the rule of three. Thrice the same ingredient forms an extract. Excellent. Yeah, don't quit your day job there, Zasilifen. Though, uh, it does certainly distract from the fact that uh, he makes no mention of actual measurements or anything. Here we go. By Sylvanas, the Forest Father, we are granted balance. Don't mind me, just raiding a garden. And stealing your basket. Oh, or your rotten chicken eggs. It says single use, so I'm guessing improvised throwing weapon? Dagger root. I actually did have someone recommend that we go back and buy all those ingredients we saw earlier. Which, uh, I guess we will do. Just between episodes, you know. We're focused on exploration right now. Shh! I'm concentrating! Does this look good? Is the coin in the middle? Oh. On the one hand, I don't want to trick this poor bird, but on the other hand, that key is probably useful. Yeah, let's go for it. But I won't be upset if we fail. Well, I'm certainly no expert, but I feel like you could benefit from some decluttering. 
lose a few of the random goo and garish accessories. Let the space breathe. Nice. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. This is better. Oh, everything's up for grabs now. Well, we'll do the poor guy a favor. We'll help him declutter. There you go. One freshly refurbished nest. Oh, no! Where is it? I'll put the coin right here! Oh, uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll call that payment for services rendered. Gotta go. Hey, tough it. I'm sleeping. Yes, yes, I, I, so I say. Would you mind doing it somewhere else? <sighs> okay. Yeah, get out of here. Do you even lift, bro? Wow, and I guess we've come full circle. So that just leaves the door. Well, technically, we also have these two offshoot pads as well, but our quest marker's on the door. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, head inside. What did I tell you? So I'm sorry. I'm sorry! Have you lost your senses, Koga? Release her! She stole the idol of Sylvanus. She must pay the price. We will imprison the thief under guard of my serpent. When we cast out the rest, she may join them. Let the devil be an example. We will tolerate outlanders no longer. The grove will be made safe. The circle will be closed. All right, I think we've heard enough. Please. I'm sorry. This is madness, Korga. She's just a... A what, Wrath? A thief? A poison? A threat? I will imprison the devil. And I will cast out every stranger. And here I thought I was invited. Let me ask, what has this girl actually done? Girl? You mean parasite? She eats our food, drinks our water, then steals our most holy idol in thanks. Wrath, lock her up. She remains here until the rite is complete. And keep still, devil. Tila is restless. Come, Koga. We took back the idol. Surely... Do it. Okay, yeah, we have to be very careful here. Easy now, my cold-blooded compatriot. Hurting that child will only make things worse. Silence. I answer only to mistress. Alright, well, it's probably safer to go persuasion, but I am very curious what her real motivations here are. 
Let's go for it. Yes. Halsin is gone. I am first druid now. I will take control and prove my authority. Wow, okay. Gotta say, that feels awfully power grabby for a supposedly neutral druid. Look, Kaga, everyone knows you're in charge. You've shown them that. But if you want them to respect you, you need to show them you have some restraint. Fair words. Child. Take to the others word of my grace. Sif, Sif, Tila, to me. <laughs> it hurts. Thank you, Korga. Master Halsin. Halsin isn't here. Keep his name off your tongue, lest Tila pierce it. Well, that's a relief. And apparently half our party wants to talk about it. Ridiculous. We just let her run off. She's a child. A devil child. One who tried to steal from us. Yet she failed. That's what matters. All right, before we go any further, let's catch up with our companions. That woman has more venom in her heart than a snake in its fangs. But at least the child is safe. What is youth if not a time to be forgiven for one's transgressions? Yes, clearly the child had done wrong, but to treat her in such a manner... I'm glad we stopped it from going any further. Couldn't agree more. The girl wasn't innocent, but that doesn't mean she was guilty. We've shown them once. We take Grove Law seriously. By letting that child escape without consequence. We might as well have lain on the ground and let them trample us. Hmm. How about you, Shadowheart? You want to weigh in here? I know that look. You're wondering why I was in pain before. Let's just clear the air about that now. It's just an old wound that hurts me from time to time. Nothing to be concerned about. It's nothing to do with the tadpoles, at least, in case your imagination is in danger of getting away from you. It's just something I have to live with. I actually assumed it had something to do with Kaga, but uh, how bad is it? Quite a lot, if I'm being honest. But it always passes quickly, so I can manage. Well, I won't pry then. I'll, I'll trust your judgment. I'm sure we all have our own sinister secrets. Right, Gale? Asterion? But while I have you, what's the story with that strange trinket you keep fussing with? There's no story. None that you're entitled to hear, anyway. Just forget you ever saw it. Okay, fair enough. Any thoughts on the rest of this? What we've been through so far? We've been through quite a lot, with likely more to come. Care to narrow it down a little? I'm sure you must have thoughts on our unwelcome guests. Must I? Thinking about it won't help. We know what to do, so let's do it. Find a way to rid ourselves of these things. Personally, I think finding this Halsin is our best bet. If we're truly desperate, we can try to convince that goblin gut in assisting us. Yeah, yeah. The, those are my thoughts as well. Those do seem to be our two main options. And if we do get cured, any thoughts on what you'll do next? 
I suppose we'd go our separate ways. Not a slight on your company, of course. No reason we couldn't stay together. We seem to get along well enough. Perhaps. Perhaps not. If we do survive, we'll have separate lives to return to. I need to get to Baldur's Gate. There's someone waiting for me there. Someone I have to reach. As soon as possible. That does sound important. But I won't pry if it's something you're not comfortable sharing yet. Thank you. And you're right. It's a delicate matter. Not something for light conversation. If you don't mind me asking, what are your thoughts on me? Have I held up to your expectations? I don't think I've ever had a confidant quite like you. And if I have, I can't remember them. I praise from one such as you. Thank you, Shadowheart. You know, we should find some time between disasters to get to know each other better. Must we? No harm in a little mystery, don't you think? No, of course not, but it might be easier to work together if we understand each other better. Easy is often less interesting. Besides, we've plenty of reason to rely on each other already. You can't confide in just anyone about a monster in your head. Fine. You've dragged it out of me. Perhaps I'd just like to know you better. <laughs> Sweet of you. But don't worry. I'm sure you'll get to know me just fine by traveling together. No need for interrogations just yet. Interrogation postponed. Maybe next time. Thank you. I'm sure we'll get along perfectly well. Gotta say, I am liking her a lot more now than I did back in Early Access. I really feel like they softened her edges, so to speak. Gale, too. I mean, obviously, I've already mentioned that they changed both of their introductions. Really kind of um, softened how you first met them. Though Asterion, of course, is still a cartoon supervillain. Dude tried to shank us the first time we met him. And, I mean, look, he hasn't revealed his secret to us yet, but I think it's pretty obvious he's a vampire. Dude's a pale albino elf with giant fangs and constant blood puns. Not sure what Gale's deal is, though. I never really used him. Anyway, we're almost at time, but I would like to at least clear this room before we stop. This should hopefully help us get more context with what's really going on with the Druid Circle, because I think it's pretty obvious there's something, there's something going on with Kaga. She seems way too ambitious for your average Druid. You did well to speak up for the girl. That snake is fickle. A tragedy prevented. Yes, but what do you think would have happened had I not intervened? Nothing befitting a child. Nothing befitting any of our world's creatures. We've let a snake replace our leader. She will see the tieflings driven out, or worse. She does seem quite ill-suited for the task. What happened to her predecessor? Master Halsin. Perhaps Goblin Court, perhaps dead. He'd set Mistress Korga back in line. Hold her to task, stop this damn ritual. More will die if the rite is finished. So many more, sent into a world gone mad. Well, by happy coincidence, I happen to have need of Halson's expertise. I'll do my best to find him. Would you? 
I would give anything to see Halcyn return home. Fret not, my friend. I'll do everything in my power to see it done. Sylvanas' blessing upon you, and my gratitude as well. Halcyn is an elf with the presence of a bear. He left west with the adventurers. You won't mistake the first druid for anyone else. Newly noted. Oh, let's, um... Let's light up our torch. Should make for some slightly lighter conversation. I wish I could offer more assistance. For now, I must keep a close watch on Gorga. I hope to see both you and Halson again soon. Well, soon's a relative term, but we'll we'll see. Uh, another stranger come to vex me. What will you do? Hunt me? Grab my tail? Shout until my head hurts? Yeah, I hear you on the tail thing. But no, I wasn't planning on any of that. I just wanted to give you my scent. I'll leave you be. No, wait. You smell fresh. Safe. You can stay, if you must. The wolf focuses on you, calmed in your presence. Aw, what a cutie. How about you guys? The rat doesn't respond. It simply bares its teeth. I see. How about you? The rat watches your movements, but does not speak. Uh-huh. The rat glares at you, but says nothing. Interesting. Go on. Say it. You think I'm a monster? Well, I do, but I'm too diplomatic to say it to your face. You're simply watching out for your own, and sometimes that requires a firm hand. I'm glad you deigned to use a softer touch for this one. First you urge grace, then you speak truth. You surprised me twice over. A shame the grace period ends. The Viper's fangs have been bared. She must guard her brood. No matter. I took back the idol of Sylvanus, and the rite is resumed. We will seal the grove, free from harm. Free of intruders. You do realize you're putting the tieflings in a very difficult position. They may not survive if you cast them out. And mine perish if he stays. You showed great metal at the gate. The metal of a skilled sword for hire. I want you to provide your services to Sevlor. Offer to guide the Outlanders out of the grove. I'm sure they'll reward you well. They're to be gone before final prayer. If they are not, the Viper must strike. Well, let's hope it doesn't come to that, for both our sakes. I will speak with Zevlor. You will do more than speak. This tale ends but one way. With the Outlander Rot cleansed, and the grove forever shrouded. She seems nice. Why are you here? I sent you to Zevlor. Yes, you did, but I still had questions. This rite, for example. What can you tell me of it? It seems quite potent. The rite of thorns. It is the Tree Father's gift that none come to harm. When we speak the final prayer, the great vine will sprout forth. The grove will be cloaked in bramble and thorn. No one enters, no one leaves. Sanctuary. 
None of this can happen while outlanders infect us. Sylvanus demands that we choke them out. Well, that's just delightful. I hear there is also a healer among you. I would speak with her, if you don't mind. Nettie, yes. She's bumbling about somewhere. But if your treatment is meant to outlast the right, you'll be removed with the rest. Of course. I guess I'd best hurry then. Gaga? Yeah, we're probably going to have to kill her, but we'll see. And I believe that's Nettie over there, but we'll save that for next time. For now, our main focus is just to wrap things up here. Which shouldn't take too much longer. We've got two more characters and a couple of random lore objects. By claw and tooth from root to thorn, the old oak's grove to wildlings sworn. The mural shows druids claiming the grove in the name of the old oak. Sylvanus, god of nature. Neat. Logbook. Uh, Logbook 12, 1371. This hefty book is labeled 1371 and stamped with an elegant stag against a dark green background. Sixth of Uktar sent two druids, some of the newer recruits up north. Village there has had two years of failed crops and are unlikely to survive the next winter. Ninth of Uktar, a group from Baldur's Gate arrived. They've set up camp on the edge of the forest. Two bears and a fox came by. Their territory had been burned out. Half the fox's cubs died. Paying this new group a visit tomorrow. Tenth of Uktar, visit did not go well. After telling me where to shove it, they said they'd cut down half the forest and burn out any wildlife that dared to stick around. Claimed they were going to farm the land and make a new city of their own. Time to get creative. Twelfth of Uktar. Mudslide did the trick. Buried half their farming equipment and made the rest useless. They won't be back any time soon. Got reports of a red wizard in the village south of here. Sending three rangers to investigate. If they catch even a whiff of a red She's cloak, a I'm contacting the house child. of Sylvanus. One who tried to steal from us. Yet she okay, see, that's, that's more what I would expect from druids. Generally trying to de-escalate and maintain balance, as opposed to Kaga over there, who just seems to be taking more of a scorched earth approach. Though I suppose it takes all types. Detailed report. Someone has written Shadow Curse at the top of this page and a number of notes below. Trees infected but still alive. Malicious component to underlying magic. Resists removal, attempts to infect caster. Range and severity of curse suggests divine origin. Umbral characteristics in vicinity to Shar's temple suggests Goddess herself is responsible. Try to steal from us again. We've shown them once. Temple of Shar. We take Grove Law seriously. By letting that child escape without consequence. That is interesting because, of course, Shadowheart's a follower of Shar. Pawprint suggests an animal walked across this entry, smudging everything except a few words. Animal Scout sent. Eastern Town. Villagers possibly still alive. Violent. Alright, well, I think we got the general gist of that. A warning to the Sword Coast. People of the Sword Coast, look around you. What do you see? A collection of gods fearing humans, elves, and dwarves or an infernal corruption of that divine image. Tieflings, wearing their devilish heritage for all to see, walk among us as if they didn't owe their existence and allegiance to the lords below. 
These hells touched peoples have infiltrated our cities, our organizations, even our families. They can claim to be good all they wish. Would you believe the tiger who looks at you with dripping fangs if he said he ate nothing but vegetables? No, we can see their true nature, plain as day. But they are not the only evil infiltrating our world. All around I see Drow, Dorgar, and other creatures of the Underdark strive for acceptance. But why should you accept them when their brothers raid our countryside and steal our children? Obviously, I'm not saying that they should be cast out. Obviously, I'm not saying we should return these delinquents to the Underdark and drive the tieflings back to the hells they came from. But be wary of these people, my friends. Be suspicious when you see them, and especially suspicious when you don't. Wow, too real. Moving on. Study of the Sword Coast. A scrap of a larger map fasted to the page with fragrant sap. Someone has written, Tainted by curse above the lands to east, Beyond the mountains on the road to Baldur's Gate. Huh. You know, uh, I keep thinking that Baldur's Gate is west past the Goblin Ruins. Kind of begs the question of why we even need to go there. Aside from diffusing the current situation, obviously. I don't want blood on my hands. We have the right to defend our home. So that's what you want? To kill a bunch of innocents? I don't want to kill anyone. But I won't let this grove be harmed. Not again. The forest rose with claw and tooth to tear the darkness from its roots. Beasts chasing beasts alongside a wild woman. A depiction of some local folktale, perhaps. Perhaps. Oh. Interesting. That last plaque is owned. I'm not sure we can actually interact with that one without making them mad. That mural, they look like Dark Justicias. Ridiculous! In darkest hour, a concord made, twixt harp and wild against the shade. Harp and wild? You recall stories of an alliance between druids and the harpers, but the details are vague. Right, and we found signs of harpers just south of here. Though it's hard to say how recent that was. Please leave. Our hospitality has limits, and they were crossed long ago. Is this about me standing on your table? Sorry about that, it just kind of happened. <sighs> And with that, I believe we are done. Unless we miss some loot around the edges here. Let me just take another quick pass here. Ooh, what about this over here? Yes, okay. Not much inside, but free wicker chest. And potato. I will absolutely take those. All right, well, this was another very intriguing episode. Not the most action-packed, but we saved a child. We found out more about what's going on here. Oh, right, we had another guy. I guess he wandered off. Well, we'll get him next time. But yeah, yeah, we, uh, we found like, I don't know, 20 different dangling threads. Obviously, there's the current crisis, which is our most immediate concern, but... There's some intriguing stuff in there as well about ties between the druids and the harpers, who in turn were investigating a cult of Saloon. While simultaneously the druids are concerned about a potential curse from Shar. Obviously too early to draw any conclusions now, but it's all stuff we'll have to keep in mind moving forward. 
That said, we'll hit the pause button for now. I'll do the usual off-screen bookkeeping, and we'll pick up here next time. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Revenant. Aloise, Crow King LOR, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracut, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Germay, Kazorm, Mark Tiemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Rowan Church, Thomas Piedkowski, Drip Hop and Skip, and Val and Rook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. My friend, every story benefits from a dragon.